In this video, we're going to focus on the root mean square velocity of gases and how to calculate it. So let's say if we have a sample of argon gas at 400 Kelvin. How fast are these molecules moving? What is the root mean square velocity or speed? Velocity is simply speed with direction. The equation that you need is V, or sometimes you might see a, a U symbol, is equal to 3RT divided by the molar mass of the gas. Now R is the energy constant 8.3145 joules per mole per Kelvin. You don't want to use the 0 0.08206 number. T is the temperature in Kelvin and M is the molar mass. Now here's what you have to be careful. The molar mass here is not grams per mole, but it's uh, kilograms per mole. So argon has a molar mass of 40. That's 40 grams per mole. For this equation to work, you got to convert grams into kilograms. And what you need to know is that one kilogram is equal to a thousand grams. So let's put the kilogram on top and a thousand grams on the bottom so that the units grams will cancel. And 40 divided by 1,000, that's 0 0.04 kilograms per mole. So that's the number that we need to plug in into the velocity equation. Now, let's plug in the values that we have. So R is going to be 8.3145. The temperature is 400 Kelvin. And the molar mass is 0 0.04. So let's see if we can solve this. So what's 3 times 8? 3 times 8 is uh, 24. And 3 times 0.3 is like 0.9. So 3 times 8.3145, we can say that's about, it's a little bit higher than 24.9. So let's say that's about 25. And 400 is basically 4 times 100. 0 0.04 is 4 times 0 0.01. And so we can cancel the 4s. Sometimes it, may not, it might be useful to know how to do math without the calculator. So what we now have is the square root of 25 times 100 divided by 0 0.01. Now, I need to clear away the page. Now, in the inside of this fraction, what we're going to do is multiply the top and the bottom by 100. The reason being is 100 times 0 0.01 is 1. And so we just get a 1 on the bottom. So we have 25 times 100 times 100. And on the bottom is just 1. So we can separate that into the square root of 25 times the square root of 100 times the square root of 100. And so this is 5, that's 10, and that's 10. So the root mean square velocity of argon is approximately 500 meters per second. You can type this in your calculator, and you should get an answer close to 500. It might be like 499.9 or something. But this is a good approximation. So now you know how to calculate it without a calculator, if the numbers are nice. So let's talk about the equation and the concepts within the equation. So notice that the velocity of the gas is dependent on the temperature and the molar mass. So if we increase the temperature, what's going to happen to the velocity of the gas molecules? Will it increase or decrease? Well, whenever you increase the numerator of a fraction, the value of the entire fraction goes up. So if you raise the temperature, the molecules, they're going to be moving faster and faster. They're going to gain kinetic energy. And so the velocity increases. So the velocity is directly proportional to the square root of the temperature. So what does that even mean? So let's say if the Kelvin temperature is 300, and let's quadruple it to 1,200. So that means we increase the Kelvin temperature by a factor of 4. 
it has to be the Kelvin temperature. Celsius temperature doesn't work very well. You got to plug in the Kelvin temperature to make this equation work. So let's say if we increase the temperature by a factor of four, and let's say the velocity was 100 meters per second, how much will the velocity increase by? So because the velocity is proportional to the square root of the temperature, well, if you take the square root of four, you're going to get two, so the velocity is going to double. It's going to be 200 meters per second. So if you were to increase the Kelvin temperature by a factor of nine, the velocity will increase by three because the square root of nine is three. If you increase the Kelvin temperature by 16, the velocity will increase by a factor of four because the square root of 16 is four. If you were to double the Kelvin temperature, if you increase, if you increase it by a factor of two, the velocity will increase by the square root of two. Likewise, if you increase the temperature by three, the velocity will increase by the square root of three. You have to incorporate the square root because it's part of the equation. So hopefully, I, hopefully you get the point. You, you see how the velocity is related to the temperature. Now, what about the velocity and the molar mass? What is the relationship between the two? So if we increase the molar mass of a gas, is the velocity of the gas, is it going to increase or decrease? Well, notice that the molar mass is on the denominator of the fraction. Anytime you increase the value of the denominator of a fraction, the value of the entire fraction decreases. So the velocity will decrease. And it makes sense because heavy gas molecules move slower and lighter gas molecules move faster. So now let's use some numbers to understand this. So let's say if we're comparing two gases. Well, let's um, clear away the page first. So let's consider hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. So the molar mass of hydrogen is about 2, and for oxygen is 32. So this is an increase of 16. So we know that if the molar mass goes up, the velocity goes down, which means that because hydrogen is lighter than oxygen, the hydrogen gas molecules should be moving faster. So let's say that hydrogen has a speed of 200 meters per second at a certain temperature. At this same temperature, what is the speed for the oxygen molecules? So since the molar mass increases by 16 from hydrogen to oxygen, the square root of 16 is 4. The velocity should decrease by a factor of 4. So to find the velocity of oxygen relative to hydrogen, we need to divide it by 4. So it should be moving at a speed of 50 meters per second. So here we have an inverse square root relationship. Whenever the molar mass of a gas goes up, the velocity goes down. So now what we're going to do is we're going to focus on deriving the equation. What does the equation even come from? Well, it comes from two equations. The fact that the average kinetic energy of a gas is equal to 3 over 2 RT. So what this equation tells us is that the average kinetic energy of gas is only dependent on temperature. If the temperature is the same, the average is the same. Now, grant to keep in mind, this is the average. We're averaging billions and billions of molecules. This equation doesn't apply to a single gas molecule. It applies to billions of gas molecules, the average kinetic energy. So it's proportional to temperature. Now, the kinetic energy of a single object is 1 half mv squared. Now, when you have billions of gas molecules, one molecule may have a lot of kinetic energy, while another may have a small amount. Let's say if, you know, you collide a ball with another ball. The ball that gets hit will gain kinetic energy. The ball that strikes the other ball might lose kinetic energy. So imagine if you're playing pool and there's one ball at rest and you have another ball and you strike it. The ball at rest gains kinetic energy. The ball that was moving that strikes the ball at rest will lose kinetic energy. And so some molecules will be moving faster, some will be moving slower, but the average of a billion gas molecules that are colliding with each other, the average is dependent on temperature. Now, R has units joules per mole Kelvin. Now, kinetic energy is in joules, and in this equation, mass is in kilograms, and the velocity is in meters per second. 
Now, notice that we don't have moles in this Ke equation. This is the kinetic energy of a single molecule. So we need to introduce moles if we're going to set these two equal to each other. So the average kinetic energy is going to be equal to the kinetic energy times 1 over n. Because the average kinetic energy is 3 over 2 RT. And Ke is just 1 half mv squared and then times 1 over n. If you focus on the units, we said R is, is in joules per mole per Kelvin. And temperature is in Kelvin. Now, kinetic energy, 1 half mv squared, it's kilograms times meters per second squared, which ends up being joules. So if we introduce moles, the units will now uh, balance. So we'll have joules per mole on both sides of the equation. So that's why we have to introduce 1 over n to the right side of the equation so that the units uh, are balanced. And it's going to work out. We're going to get the right equation if we do this. So let's multiply both sides by 2 so we can get rid of the fractions. And the next thing we need to realize is that the mass divided by the moles is equal to the molar mass. If you focus on the units, the mass is, in chemistry, mass is usually in grams, and n is usually moles. Grams over moles is molar mass. But in physics, mass is kilograms. That's why when we calculated the root mean square velocity, we needed it to be kilograms per mole instead of grams per mole. But what you need to know is mass over moles is molar mass. So we have 3RT equals capital M for molar mass times V squared. So mv squared is equal to 3rt. So let's divide both sides by the molar mass. And so v squared is 3rt over m. And now we can take the square root of both sides. And so that's how we can derive the equation. So the root mean square velocity is 3rt over m. So now you see where it comes from. So that is it for this video. Thanks for watching and uh, have a great day.